Well, I know it feels good to be back in front of you guys, uh, you know, in front of these chairs. And a lot has changed. I see a lot of different tape recorders and iMacs and Macs. And I remember when you guys just wrote things down and just used tape recorders, you know what I mean? So it's totally different now. It's a it's a great level of respect to be here in this, in this situation because uh, when I came in, I was a how should I put it, a, a, a snotty-nosed kid who thought that the world belonged to him just because I was who I was. And I got a uh, stern, uh, you know, relationship and teachings from, from a man who, you know, without him, I definitely wouldn't be able to be here talking to you now, and that's Jim Trestle. Uh, he taught me everything about life. He taught me what it meant to be a man. Uh, he taught me what it meant to, to understand the decisions that you make. Uh, they shape you. They shape everybody around you. And um, treat people the way you want to be treated. Uh, we talk a lot of times about humility and uh, putting people first. Uh, but at times, you, you always give yourself the benefit of the doubt and, you know, it's, it's hard to, to have an understanding that things happen because of everybody else around you. And that's the only reason that I'm standing here today with the ability to talk to you about the accomplishments that I, I had and, you know, the success that we had here at Ohio State. It was all because of everybody else. Uh, it's tremendous being here, you know, and I say it jokingly, but it is like cheers. It's cool to come back and be where everybody knows your name, you know, and you know, it's it's not about what you are going to do for me. It's, you know, kind of the work that you've already put in. It's a genuine love. So I love this place with all my heart, and I'm going to try to build some more of a brand here, do some more things in the future. Any questions? So we'll open it up front row, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Troy, you know, you had such success against the Michigan game, in the Michigan game and stuff, and I was just wonder what would your advice be to J.T. Barrett? as he faces his first one, because you did that a long time ago as a sophomore. Uh, the first advice is stick to the game plan. Uh, don't try to be someone um, that he's not. And I mean, obviously, we've gotten a chance to see the transformation and the growth uh, behind JT Barrett uh, this whole season. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much blown away because as a freshman, uh, he's doing some things that it took me uh, an ample amount of years to, to, to grasp and have an understanding about. And uh, we as Buckeye fans, uh, we should be privileged to see his growth, and it'll do nothing but rise. Did you feel any different on those game days than you did the week before or in a bowl game? I mean, was there anything different about the Michigan game that you could literally feel? There's a lot of difference. Uh, being and growing up in Ohio, uh, definitely biased towards – having an understanding to which game is the best game of the year. But uh, it's a different feel. Uh, Donnie, Nicky, and Mike Doss, uh, you know, they introduced me to the game with a couple of shellackings my red shirt freshman year that lets me know that even though I'm a quarterback on the roster, this week is a little different. Uh, I was messing around with our head equipment guy, Kevin Rise, and once I walked in, uh, some of the, the – um, assistants, so to speak, were putting the blue electric tape and the wings on. And, you know, I kind of got offended because if we as freshmen didn't take pride and do it by a certain time, then we had either extra laps we had to run or it was a penalty. And, you know, the, the rivalry has taken off. We won't even let the guys touch the blue tape. So I understand now, you know. So you wore a Michigan helmet, though, what you're saying? <clears throat> Unfortunately, I did. Troy, uh, this week, I guess, LL Cool J played 24-7 in the facility. Um, I guess whether that's a motivating thing, I don't know. But when you were here, what motivated, motivating techniques did Tress use that were the Bruce, effective? The Bruce. Earl Bruce. <laughs> he was our only motivation that Thursday when he came for his uh, talk, so to speak. Or, you know, and, and every year it was the same things, but in a different chronological order because, you know, sometimes it'll be 
uh, the exact way it happens, and then the next year it'll be a little ad lib, and then the next year it'll be another little ad lib. And, but that's why you gotta love Earl Bruce. Uh, without him in certain situations, our lore wouldn't be the way that it is at Ohio State. And you know, he did what he did against Michigan, and yeah. So Earl Bruce for me was it. I just couldn't wait for his speeches. What got you motivated in terms of focus that week that you played so well uh, in that game? What was there anything you can point to? Uh, for you guys that don't know, uh, I was a foster kid for seven years, and my foster brother was a guy by the name of Rod Smith, and he was actually a Buckeye also. Uh, so growing up, um, you know, in kind of the Collinwood area, when I was a foster kid, he would come home and tell me the different stories about how if you win this game, it's a better city throughout the rest of the year, but if you lose the game, you'll be in hiding for the rest of the year. And, him being 6'5", 325 pounds at the time, and him telling me those stories, and it wasn't a joke when he told me the story. He was dead serious. Uh, so some of that stuff kind of uh, reverberated and stayed with me with an understanding that I'm either going to be getting free cheeseburgers eventually throughout the year if we win, and if we don't, we're going to be paying for everything. So those things. Obviously, there's a couple of weeks left, but you're a Heisman voter. Uh, have you made up your mind yet? I am. Um, I usually like to wait until the last second. Uh, the electors usually are like sending me the red alert emails, like get your vote in now. You know what I mean? But uh, I have a tremendous uh, amount of respect for that process and having an understanding to what it takes to win the Heisman Trophy. And I think it shouldn't be awarded until the last game of whoever is in the standings or whichever candidates are playing, because you never know who's going to have that breakout moment. Um, but we, we've got great talent across the nation, and I'm definitely biased towards some of the guys that are going to be wearing the scarlet and gray if they are up there, but you didn't hear that from me. So you, so you won't, you haven't already made up your mind for James? Not yet, not yet. Um, he's dear to me, so he'll be in there with me. Consideration yeah, oh yeah. I, th I, I think he should be in everybody's mind. Why, why, why? Statistically, the things that he's doing, um, obviously, you know, numbers don't lie. And uh, Tom Herman and our offensive staff are putting him and we're putting other guys in, you know, positions to make plays. And JT's doing nothing but capitalizing on every single chance and opportunity. So I think he'll continue to do that. Well, I know for a fact both of my babies will be with me. My daughter is six. Her name is Tania Lily Smith. My son is a junior to myself. He'll be three on the 30th. Uh, my emotions, first and foremost, will be to have them in check so everybody will know that Troy Smith's kids has a little bit of manners. <laughs> but um, it, it, I'll, I'll be swirling with emotion because everybody who had a chance to help me, um, to push me, to embark on this this type of illustrious career that I did have here, uh, they will be there, and it's it's about me getting a chance to to relish in a moment with them because like just like I said before, without them, I wouldn't be here. So I'll be with my family. Have you talked to Coach Russell since you learned this was gonna happen? Yeah, yeah. Uh, more so than anything, I I talk to him on a on a daily basis as a man. Uh, I don't think that it should be. Uh, special occasions that bring people together. Uh, he was with me through the the worst of the times and the best of the times, and he never batted an eye or treated me different. Uh, I think that's why I owe him, uh, you know, the ability to just give him a call and see how he's doing on a daily basis because he literally gave me and my family a chance to springboard into something different. Front row middle, Todd. Troy, what would this offense is different than the one that you played in. What would your numbers be like if you got to play in this? Man, shovel passes for touchdowns, <laughs> you know. Uh, but just like I said, um, you know, Tom Herman is, and, and we saw Kenny Guyton just, um, you know, relish in his offense. We saw, I mean, we see what Braxton can do. Um, Cardell, when he gets in there, he's, you know, uh, athletic and fast and strong, can throw the ball also. So. Uh, I think if I paid attention, uh, you know, went to all my meetings, I think I'd, I'd do pretty good. 
What do you? Which one of the quarterbacks, Braxton, or do you see yourself similar to Braxton um, or JT, or not at all? Just a completely different. There's some similarities, um, but uh, every guy is different in its own right. In his own right, um, obviously, the things that Braxton can do, I know I couldn't do. But JT bested that with his 86-yard touchdown run. I would have ran out of gas by like 25, 30 yards, you know. And and I don't I don't have a problem with that though. You know, I I, I understand my strengths and weaknesses, and I guess if if there is one or a couple uh, attributes that we do have uh, in common, that would be the athleticism. That would be the ability to to extend the play and keep it going. Um, but freakishly. Like, athletic is the words that you should always be using when you're talking about Braxton Miller. Uh, I think um, <clears throat> JT's athleticism is going to do nothing but uh, get better over the years, but we can't take anything away from him. Um, 100 rushing yards is 100 rushing yards any way you slice it up. Uh, it's not easy to get there, and, you know, he's doing it, and it looks effortless. Um, you know, the touchdown run, they get a chance to replay it all the time. And it's a testament to the people that work out with them in the weight room, uh, the ability to maintain that type of speed for as long as he did. Uh, it's not easy. And uh, as a quarterback, Braxton has done some things, running around, throwing the ball, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the athleticism is, is one thing that I would say we all had in common, but everybody's pretty different. I know you've talked about this before. Can you elaborate on the suspension at the end of the 2004 season, how that motivated you going forward? It's been 10 years now, and I know mean, yeah. you talked about how that really motivated you for the rest of your career. Well, at that time, um, a, a young guy not having a total understanding to who I was, um, you know, made a bad mistake, made a decision. Uh, the, the empathy that I was shown from the staff, from my peers, uh, from the university, was all of the motivation for me to, to make it and be a better person the next time around. Uh, uh, to, to go without, to be in solitude, uh, it's, it's pretty bleak. Uh, the, the, the things that we do in life, we usually do it uh, knowing that you're going to have some type of support, knowing that uh, the reason why you do things are for other people. So when I was taken away from my brothers, it hurt me uh, down to the core to the point where uh, a silly decision off the field wasn't going to take me away from the camaraderie that I had worked so hard to achieve with the guys. And that was my whole motivation, uh, being in a situation to where my guys can trust me, have an understanding that I will always be there. Uh, yeah, so the decision was made. It wasn't a good one. Um, they allowed me to bounce back, and, you know, the rest is history. All right, Blake. Troy, as I remember the games, 04 was kind of the coming out party. 05, you had to rally the team in the big house, and 06 was the big shootout here. Mm -hmm. Is one better than the other? Um, I remember being, I think you were down nine with seven to go in 05. I was going to say, anytime you, and um, it's funny, a Wolverine said this the other day on TV. He said, uh, when you are loyal to your soil, you know, good things happen. So anytime you are, you, you have the ability to to take the uh, a tremendous gasp of air out of a hundred thousand people somewhere else and you 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 really put them in a situation where they have to be quote unquote loyal to their soil uh, I think it means a lot uh, so doing that at their stadium you know in a, in a situation where we weren't supposed to win um, you know backs against the wall Everybody pretty much, you know, uh, leaned on one another, depended on one another, and that's the beautiful thing about football. Um, you know, 11 guys have to be on the same page at the same time, and if anything, the, the win up there um, would, would be the one that stands out. Pretty good catch by Gonzalez. Incredible catch, because if you go back, and I'm glad they didn't have sports science for us, because the, they would have went back and saw that it was a terribly underthrown ball, and, you know, if... Anthony Gonzalez doesn't bend or torque his body 53 degrees to the right, then you know what I mean? So it, it would have been it would have been pretty uh embarrassing for me, but Anthony Gonzalez had done nothing but make plays since he'd been here, so that's who he is. Way back in the middle, Steve. 
Yeah, Troy. Uh, the 2006 season, um, one of the best seasons a quarterback has ever had at Ohio State, the Big Ten. Uh, I think 30 touchdowns and five interceptions. You're the best player on the best team, won the Heisman Trophy. Just what did you take from that season, and what was it like to be in that groove week after week? And I know it did not end <clears throat> the way you or your teammates probably right. wanted it, but just uh, that season was magical up to a point, I suppose. Very magical. Very magical in the sense that um, football has done nothing but springboard me into different positions in life to where you understand that people are the most important things. Uh, we like to use the, the phrase uh, iron sharpens iron or men sharpen men. Well, I think people sharpen people. Uh, there are incredible situations across the board where uh, beautiful women have helped men, men have helped men, men have helped women, et cetera, et cetera. Women helping women. Um, for the most part, that whole season for me was everybody being in a situation to where we were going to be there together, we were going to stay there together, we were going to help, and we were just going to continue to, to push forward. Um, my whole career, um, I had to have an understanding that um, it wasn't just me putting myself in these situations, it was because of everybody else. Front row left, Doug. Troy, you talked some about the 04 game, but go, were you nervous for that, for your first Michigan game? Oh, yeah. Quarterback. Well, you remember the feelings like heading into that? Well, the, the, the butterflies and the anxiety that uh, follows you through the skull session, through, um, you know, the, the, the early morning routines, through it, it can't really be, how should I put it, um, you know, just talked about in just this one sequence of events is right now because you don't really understand the magnitude of the game until years and years and years after, until you get a chance to, to take another picture with a kid who is now 12, and at the time he was seven or five, and he says, man, that was the greatest thing in the world. And you at the time, you're trying to downplay it because it's just football. Because the, the whole time that you're being talked to about the situation is treated just like it's practice. Treat it just like it's routine. And what happens is, is through the quote unquote dumbing it down of making it routine, it does become second nature. It becomes like the back of your hand, so to speak. So even with that being said, <clears throat> until you hit the field and you feel that there are really hundreds of thousands of people watching you, watching your every single move, you really don't have an understanding. Um, obviously, you, you take the first hit, you, you hand the first uh, run off, you throw the first incomplete, then you're back in your groove. But until then, um, you know, you're thinking about all types of things. Um, and it's a, it's a feeling that I wouldn't trade for anything in the world. And I know JT's going to be on cloud nine. If, if I can remember, um, they were they were poised to go and do some 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 like incredible things that year, so we were the spoiler, so to speak. Um, I had always envisioned having huge games in that game, um, but the the ability to to know and say, you know what, today we really don't have much to lose, and we can spoil any and everything that they have going on. So let's just lay it all on the line. And um, I talked about this before. Myself and Anthony Gonzalez, we started off on scout team together. And our first um, remembrance at practice was a deep post over the middle on a busted coverage that I wasn't supposed to be throwing to him because the red circle at that time was on somebody else. That was, that's another battle uh, myself and Mark D'Antonio used to go through. So, um, But we joked all the time about his first touchdown pass being a deep post. And sure enough, it was a deep post over the middle. and. You know, that, that right there, because he was my scout team brother, it helped bring me back down. You know, this is, this is just like practice, guys, and these are the guys that we did it with. Last couple of questions. Front row, Bill. Troy, have you talked much with uh, Braxton Miller this year and can you give an idea about his state of mind? I yes. talked to Braxton a lot. Uh, I talked to him just as much as I talked to Cardell Jones, just as much as I talked to JT Barrett. Um, I tried not to, to – uh, 
put myself in a situation where when I come back and deal with the guys that they think that I am dealing with somebody because of stature or because of who they are. Um, and it's in its entirety because uh, a little bit, I understand what they have to go through nowadays as a student athlete. When we talk, I try to talk to them about regular life things. Um, it's not always about the X's and O's. It's about who he is as a person. It's about who his family is. It's about what he wants to become. So we talk about a lot of different things. We don't always just talk about football. His state of mind is great. Uh, he's doing nothing but uh, getting his body better. Uh, he's healing up. Uh, but every time I see him, he's got a smile from ear to ear, and he's doing good. And last question. Tony, middle. Players always want their senior day to come against Michigan. Mm. How, how is yours? You know, how emotional was it? How difficult was it to go through that and then get ready for the game? Very emotional. Um, for, for everyone that doesn't know, uh, Jim Tressel is like my dad, so to speak. So um, knowing that that would be the last time uh, on the field with my dad, uh, it was tough. Uh, you really don't understand what you mean to a family, to a to a person, to to uh, people that you mentor as a man until you become a father. So that situation with him, uh, now that I am a father, I can totally understand why him weeping at the time led to me you know, like a waterfall, and I couldn't stop crying once he, once I saw one tear come from his eyes, it, you know, it really made sense to what back in 2002 when we sat at the meeting in front of my mother, Gian Sr., him and Mel Tucker, and he said, I, I, will, I will be there for your son. Um, we'll, we'll jump on a sword for your son. You know, you don't have to worry about anything, Mrs. Smith. We have him. And, um, that was pretty much everything that passed through then. How hard was it to get back up for the game? Well, it wasn't that hard because the first drive of the game, Michigan scored. So you, we ain't crying no more. We got some points to score now, you know. So it wasn't that hard. It wasn't that hard.